Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson here. Uh, this is a video on consecutive integer word problems. So we're going to do one problem together, uh, and we're going to do notes on the first two pages, and then you have a chance to pause the video and try a problem on your own, and then at the end you can see how you did. All right. So right now I want you to think about the word consecutive. What what does it mean, right? Okay. Well, when you count by ones from any number in a set of integers, you obtain consecutive integers. So for example, the numbers 2, 3, 4, and 5 are all consecutive integers. If I want to keep going, it would be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and, and forever, right? Um, so the big thing about consecutive is that the numbers increase by 1 every time. So 3 plus 1 gives us 4, 4 plus 1 gives us 5. And the same thing is true for negatives, all right? Uh, some consecutive negative integers would be negative 3, and then negative 2, and negative 1. Again, if you add 1 to these, those make it consecutive. So the next number after negative 1 would be, say, 0. So let's add a few more here. Let's say if we have uh, the number 17. Well, if I add 1, it makes it 18. If I add 1, it makes it 19. So that's three consecutive integers. And then say if we had, say, yeah, no, how about negative 40? Well, if I add 1 to negative 40, we get negative 39. If I add 1 to negative 39, we get negative 38, and, and so on. All right. Now, in order to solve problems that involve uh, consecutive integers, you have to be able to write an equation. All right. And sometimes you don't know what the first integer is going to be. So let's say, for example, if the first integer is an unknown. Okay. And let's call that n. All right. So right now we don't know what that number is, but we know the next integer is going to be one more than this, right? So I'm going to put a comma here, and the next integer is going to be n plus one. And what I can do is I can now plug a number in for n. Let's say if n is, say, uh, I don't know, 25. Well, if n is 25, it'd be 25, right? And then 25 plus 1 gives us 26. If I want to do the next integer, it'd then also be n plus 2, because 25 plus 2 gives you 27. And this keeps on going. So it'd be n plus 3, and then n plus 4, and, and so on. All right? So keep this in mind as we solve the first problem together. All right, so let's take a look at this first problem. So the problem says the sum of three consecutive integers is 12. And what are the integers? Now this one you could probably do in your head. You could figure out what number plus what number plus what number equals 12. But you gotta start to use algebra to, to do things like this because soon you'll be doing much more advanced things. So if you notice, they don't tell us what the first number is, right? Okay, so because of that, we're gonna let n equal the smallest integer. All right, so n is going to be the unknown. That's going to be the smallest integer. Now, we know that we're going to be adding three consecutive, right? So that means the next integer, or the middle one, right, is going to be one more than this one. So I'm going to let n plus 1 be the middle one, the middle integer. And then finally, I'm going to let n plus 2, okay, be the largest integer. So again, n is going to be the smallest integer. And if we add one more to that, that gives us our next one. If we add two more to the smallest, that gives us the third one. But one thing we know is that all three of the integers add up to 12. All right? So based on that, we can write an equation. So I know that n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 is going to equal 12. So let's write that down. So n, that's our first integer, plus n plus 1, that's our second integer. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Plus, parentheses, n plus 2 is going to equal our total, which is 12. And now that we have an equation, we can simplify it and solve it. So I know for a fact that if I simplify the left-hand expression, n plus n plus n is going to be 3n plus 1 plus 2 is 3, and that's going to equal 12. And now I'm just going to solve the two-step equations. So I'm going to take away 3 from both sides. And we're going to have 3n equals 9. And then if I divide both sides by 3, we're going to get n equals 3. Bingo! All right, so that right there is the first important part. So we finally know what n is now, right? So what I can do is I can take this n and plug it in for every n over here. So the first integer is going to be n, which is 3. The second one is going to be n plus 1, so 3 plus 1 is 4. 
And finally, 3 plus 2 gives us 5. If you notice, look, they're consecutive. And 3 plus 4 is 7. And 7 plus 5 gives us 12. And that's what we want. All right. So now that you understand how to now solve uh, consecutive integer word problems, when well, you pause the video, okay, and then take your time and solve the next problem. And when you're done, hit play. You can see how you did. All right, good luck. Hey everybody, welcome back. Let's say I did this practice problem. So the question says the sum of two integers is negative 43. What are the integers? All right, so this time we have two consecutive, right? So again, they'll tell us the first one. So we're gonna let n be the first integer. And because it's consecutive, we're gonna add one more to that. So the second one is gonna be n plus one. And I know together they're gonna add up to negative 43. So my equation is gonna be n plus n plus one equals negative 43 and then if I simplify this 2n plus 1 equals negative 43 and now I gotta solve for n so I'm gonna take away 1 from both sides and it's gonna be careful with the negatives right so it's gonna be 2n equals negative 44 divide both sides by 2 and when I do that I'm gonna get n equals negative 22 alright so now that we know that n is negative 22 our answer is gonna be negative 22 and then negative 22 plus 1, careful now, it's going to be negative 21, all right? Because remember, it increases by 1, right? So negative 22 and negative 21 are the two consecutive integers that add up to negative 43. All right, how'd you do?